Welcome to the Department of Engineering Sciences Jenkin Lecture for 2022. I'm Professor Martin Booth and I'm the Deputy Head of the Department of Engineering Science. So we welcome all of you joining us through the Meeting Minds platform or through the YouTube stream. Uh, in this session, we will commence with preliminary lectures from the theme of engineering solutions across science and technology. Uh, lectures will be given by members of our department, uh, Patrick, Dr. Patrick Salter and Professor Tim Dennison. But first, we will open with a presentation from this year's fourth year undergraduate project poster competition winner, uh, Ben Kay. Now, Ben is presenting uh, a, a presentation titled Design and Build of an Automated Bioreactor. Um, Ben was a student at Magdalen College and uh, graduated this summer. He has moved on to become a control and data systems engineer at Organox, which is a spin out from this department. And I would like to hand over to Ben now to give the first presentation. Hi. So this was my fourth year project it's by Dr. Harrison Steele. Uh, so bioreactors are uh, vessels which control the replication of biologically active material. Um, they range in sizes from uh, nanoliters through to milliliters through to liters at an industrial scale. Um, both the pharmaceutical industry and the food and beverage industries rely heavily on them. And uh, the biologically active material examples include uh, viruses, bacteria, cell tissue, and more. Um, <clears throat> so the motivations for this are uh, for my project were that ex uh, the commercial hardware is very expensive and therefore coming up with alternatives to this uh, which at a lower cost are important to broaden access to research and um, reduce research overheads. So <clears throat> the applications of my project uh, could include optimizing the fermentation process by uh, screening different growth conditions allowing you to then translate that to industrial growth conditions uh, for an optimal growth process. Um, furthermore, you could screen microbials for metabolites and for antibiotic resistance. So the platform consists of a acrylic chip which sits on a flatbed scanner. This takes the population size estimates using an electronic system. Uh, this population size estimate is then used to control pumps which pump growth media into the chip and also air for the continued growth of the culture. So here is the system in the lab. Uh, we have the plastic chip sitting on the flatbed scanner. And then we have the pumps uh, on the left and on the right. And then we have the growth media sitting in a sterile vessel. Um, finally, this is all controlled by a computer which coordinates pumps and the scanner system. And this is right here, my hands. So it's pretty small. It's about uh, 600, mic uh, 600 microliters per culture. And there are 12 cultures in total. So the design centers around a, radius, a radially symmetric unit, which has uh, 12 repeated subchambers. Uh, so the culture comes in, in the center, sorry, on the, on the right. And then it comes through and is separated and distributed evenly to the 12 chambers. So this comes in here on the right, um, through here. And then it expands into this increase, into this larger chamber where the cell growth is concentrated. Uh, air comes through the bottom and permeates through this silicon permeable membrane and also nucleates, causing bubbles which agitate the culture, uh, keeping it in suspension, which is important for fermentation. Um, and then the growth media comes out the top uh, as waste and is exhausted into a beaker. So this is, the design is designed to be um, cut from a single plastic sheet of acrylic, which has acrylic adhesive backed on the back and then you stack it together with a silicon membrane in between. Then on the top, I have a 3D printed Lua lock interface, which I designed for this uh, chip. And this is a standard medical connector, which allows for a quick connection and disconnection of fluid lines. So uh, when it came to prototyping, I made five devices in total. Um, it starts in the, bottom, in the top left with a laser cutter cutting from a single sheet of plastic acrylic. And then this is assembled layer by layer uh, with bolts for alignment. And finally, you get the final device shown on the right with the 3D printed interfaces on the top and bolts retaining it. Uh, this is to prevent it exploding when the pumps uh, 
like pump water through. So I designed the software and, the, um, and wrote it myself. Um, it covers the processing from the scans to, the to get to the population size estimates, as well as uh, design of control policy, which is a modified PID control system. And this sets the demands of the pumps using the estimates. And finally, I wrote the software to control the scanner and the pumps. So as you can see from the processing, this is a raw scan of the chip from the bottom, um, like so. Uh, and then it detects first the outline of the chip and then uses that to obtain the center. And from that, with circle detectors, it is able to discriminate between the wells and the bolts. Then these images of the wells are cropped uh, to reduce the image uh, storage usage and the memory footprint. And then this is used further to process and obtain its population size estimates. So this is an experiment uh, in which I conducted. Um, it shows the growth in one chamber over 20 hours. So starting from the left, you can see it starts very clear. And then as time increases, it gets much more murky and turbid. And this is indicative of the growth of the E. coli. So the software is able to um, produce the cell population size estimates for each well. And you can see that in all the cultures, um, it exhibits an exponential growth phase. And then as the resources become more limited, it saturates. And this is shown here. Um, so several problems I set out to achieve or to solve, um, which was uh, provide, produce a viable design within the sensor budget and manufacturing constraints, which I set, and um, select appropriate materials and design a small scale agitation method for the microbioreactor. Um, in future, I will actually implement the closed loop control uh, like in practice and um, improve the suspension of the bacteria and also scale up the device by repeating and manufacturing more units. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ben, for that excellent talk. Um, it's wonderful to see the high quality of research that we have going on in the department at, um, at undergraduate level. This is very impressive uh, work. So um, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask a question. Um, how easy will it be to scale this up to perhaps hundreds or thousands of examples? Uh, so for scaling to hundreds, probably OK. It takes uh, 20 minutes to laser cut this, maybe an hour to assemble it. So it's not the, like, in terms of manufacturing difficulty, it's, it's OK for, <laughs> for scaling up. But for hundreds of thousands, you'd have to probably redesign it with um, better manufacturing techniques. Mm -hmm. And what do you think the... Um, primary applications of this could be in the future? Uh, so it would be like for some low budget labs, say a desktop laser cutter is pretty cheap, pretty accurate. So you can manufacture high quality um, bioreactors at a, at a low cost. Um, and so the envisaged goal of this was basically to produce a platform where you could conduct small, small <laughs> uh, experiments in parallel. So you'd have say a hundred cultures which you could automate and conduct experiments on and have uh, at least 12 like copies of the same experiment in each case. Okay, right. Well, thank you very much again for that uh, excellent presentation. And congratulations on your, on your prize for having the best fourth year um, project. So, um, well, thank you again for that. And we will move on to the next talks.